check one two one two what's up everybody dj divine justice here aka dj east coast to the west coast here i'm talking about tractor and i've got my controller manager open to show you the triple mapping of this one knob Actually, I want it to be 13004, which is a duplicate. Uh, the first knob is loop size selector. That way, when I turn the knob, it always changes the loop size to 4, no matter what it is. Uh, second mapping to that knob is beat jump, so that no matter what the move section has the, um, the type, selector type, the mode, of the move section, it'll change it to beat jump all on deck A. And the third mapping is that it would actually move it, and then I went down and inverted it uh, based on what kind of encoder it is. Uh, the three knobs I'll be dealing with is on this VCI 400. Shout out to Walt and all the homies at uh, Global DJ Academy. Uh, we have this knob up here, this knob here, and this knob here. On the VCI, this knob, this knob, and this knob, and all three are not only turn encoders, but they're also push encoders. Um, these two are set up kind of like the normal Native Instruments way of putting the move section over here and the loop size selector over here and then when you push down on this it turns the loop on and off um, pushing down on that on and off uh, also will set a predetermined loop size so the way I made these knobs work were that I want this one to always move by four whenever I move it back and forth that's why I have the loop size selector is one of the things that's mapped to that knob. This one I want to move the loops. So what I did was the same way I have this knob set to the mode selector beat jump, I have this knob selected to change it to a loop. So if I turn that knob it actually just moves the loop by whatever the loop size is and if I move the top knob you can see it's actually moving the track and if I change the loop size and then I move that top encoder you can see it jumps the size back to four loops four beats for a loop if I'm in a loop and it's playing. If I turn this bottom knob, it actually moves the loop. The top knob switches it to beat jump and gets out of the loop. Even though the loop is still going, if you get back over to it or if you get behind it and fall into it, you'll go back into it. Another cool thing is that you can actually move or beat jump before the loop and then be moving the loop in front of you until you see exactly where you want it to start. Like say you want it to start after this breakdown happens, you just move it far enough till you get to wherever the breakdown starts, which would be right there. Then set the loop for however long you want it to be. This one sounds a little bit better at 32, but I'll leave it at 16 just so it jumps back. So that way I can use the two different knobs to move beat jumping and to move looping. And when you're in the loop, you can move the loop to make it smaller. And the cool thing is that the loop stays perfectly in time as long as your beat jumps, as long as your grids are set properly then the um, the loops will jump around in perfect time. 
I think that's about it. So hopefully this makes sense and helps for when you're able to jump around your tracks and use loops. Um, another important way of utilizing what your loops are is that depends on what happens once you start getting into um, remix decks. So I'm just switch this over and uh, capture a loop. Actually, I have these both set to uh, erase, but that that would determine. If I just drag this loop down from here into empty cell. You'll see that's the loop that was set. So it's important to have control over the size and the placement of your loops because at any time you can just on the fly grab that loop, even if it's looping or not, and send it down to the. Uh, to the remix deck. Um, if I had uh, this button properly set, I could just switch over and hit the button, and press capture, and automatically throw it into the loop remix deck. So, hope this helps. As always, practice and enjoy. And I'm out. DJ Divine Justice. Peace.